First, he's dethroned, then banished, and now he's been held in detention. What really is a crime of former Amy of Kano, Mohammed Lamido Sanusi II? And also, what is happening to the so called recovered loot being returned to Nigeria from foreign countries? Well, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Boba Kamalami SAN, knows what is not happening to them. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The Coalition of United Political Parties, COP, has condemned the dethronement and banishment of Amy Sanusi II as the Amy of Kano by the Kano state government, saying the action of the government was unconstitutional, barbaric, and an assault on the fundamental rights of the deposed Amy. The recently deposed Amy of Kano, who accepted the dethronement, Lamido Sanusi II, was taken to Nasarawa and is being detained there. And joining me to discuss this this evening on Plus Politics is legal practitioner Liberal Soshoma. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Okay. And also political analyst Obide Yi Lobinko. Thank you, Obide Yi, for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Just before we get into discussions this evening, let's take a look. The banishment is a barbaric and mundane assault on Emia, em, Emia Sanusi's human rights as a Nigerian citizen. A man who was caught on video stuffing dollars in his pocket like this, Barbarica. in his Barbariga, supported by the Buhari APC to manipulate his way to power, despite public rejection, shamelessly sat as a moral judge, both as accuser and judge, and passed sentence of detriment and banishment on the people's emir in view of the illegality. We urge the people's emir to seek redress in court to set aside this barbaric and ob obnoxious action for the good of the nation and others who may be silenced and treated like him. In the event of going to court, the opposition coalition have set aside the sum of three million naira only as independent contribution to his legal team to help in seeking redress against this obnoxious and barbaric attack on our constitutional democracy and traditional institution by a gang of incompetent and shameless institution destroyers. The Coalition of United Political Parties called their I mean, state stating their stance. Now, I'm going to start with you, Liberal Soshoma. Uh, as, as a legal expert, what is your take to the detriment of the AMIA? Um, constitutionally, the there are no the, the positions of obas and chiefs in Nigeria are mere advisory to the governor. And um, if I, I am today, as educated as I am, I don't think I will accept the position of an oba, no matter how highly placed in Nigeria. Because um, you are the mercy of a local government chairman or a mere commissioner for local government and chieftaincy affair. Yes. Um, and, and, and so I, I think um, it's not, it's not um, the way we play politics in Nigeria is not a position I will advise any, anybody who is, um, who is very vociferous to accept because um, the position of an Oba or an Emir is supposed to be that of uh, you know, reticent okay. um, to sin and not to be hard even when you want to advise. You know, the advice should be in, in behind closed door. Um, and, and so things can go wrong. And, but because you occupy a position of uh, leadership, uh, so as not to be seen to be pandering towards um, the whims and caprices of uh, political opponent, you keep quiet. So for me, it's quite unfortunate. All right. uh, things can go wrong. And so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later on in the show. I mean, the things that went wrong with um, uh, Mohamed Sanusi the second. Now, let me take your reaction to, to, to his detriment. Um, funny enough, I'm not a barrister of law, but um, I know very well that um, for anybody occupying um, a monarchical seat, uh, they are actually most times appointed by uh, uh, those in government, by politicians. So to a large extent, um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that this is happening. But I see it from the positive side. I think it's good for Nigeria as a whole. Uh, ordinarily, I wouldn't have ex uh, expected someone like uh, Sanusi to take up that office. But then he took it, and still he was himself, which is good for, for the country. And now that um, he's been the trend, I want to believe it's um, only going to give him more energy in building the nation. 
Uh, we did hear what the spokesperson for the coalition of um, um, United Political Parties did say. D does Sanusi stand any chance for for any any kind of um, legal legal suing, legal hearing? Does it stand any chance? Yeah, um, if you if you look at the the manner and way he was dethroned yes. um, uh, by provisions of Section 13 of the Canal Emirate Council Law, okay. um, they're supposed to be at least. Um, um, concurrence of four council members, uh, that was um, not done, but he has taken accepted that in good yeah, faith. Yeah. Um, also, the banishment to Nasarawa Nasara State. State. I, I wonder what they see with Nas Nasarawa. If you remember in 2005 when the, um, the Emir of Gwandu, Alhaji Mustafa Jukulu, was um, dethroned also, he was yes. banished to Nasarawa State. And then Mustafa did challenge his... Um, banishment to Nasarawa. And the Court of Appeal in, in that um, matter ruled that um, it was a violation of his constitutional right under, pro, under Section 35.1, Section 40, and, and Section 41 okay. of the 1999 Constitution. Constitution. And that you cannot restrain his right to associate, his right to freedom of movement, and his right to personal life and liberty. Um, you have a right to, to, to dethrone if you follow the procedures. Uh, uh, as laid down in the state laws, but to banish him, that um, is not within the right of the governor to do. Yeah, because I, and I, I know yeah. that if he challenges that, definitely he would get redress in court. Yeah, because I was just going to come to the question. I mean, what does a person have to do for him to get exiled? Now, he's been banished and he's been exiled. I mean, considering the, the, the reasons given behind his, his the throne and being deposed, do you think that was, that is constitutional and legal in itself? It's a, that, that act... It's, um, it's not only repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. It is also contrary to public policy. Okay. And um, it's, um, it's a, an obnoxious practice that was uh, practiced by the kings of old. Um, so as, because there's always this, um, this um, rule that you cannot have two captains in one ship. You cannot have two kings in one domain. And, and that was a practice that was retained by the colonial masters when they came on board because it suits them. And um, it's very instructive to note also that um, this is not the first time um, a king is being dethroned in Nigeria, right from, you know, as far as we can remember, starting from um, the Bini Empire, um, even, you know, not too recently uh, also, if we remember during the military era, the Sultan of Sokoto also, al Haji Ibrahim Dansuki was dethroned. Uh, the, uh, the Alafi of Oyo at some point was dethroned. The Olowu of Owo at some point also in the First Republic was dethroned by the uh, Awolowo led NCNC. The Awujale of Ijebuland, as recent as 1982, also was dethroned by the government of uh, Old uh, Ogun State, led by Olabisi Chief Olabisi Onobanjo. Uh, he challenged his dethronement in court, and uh, luckily there was a coup. and. Um, uh, um, Oladik Bodia took over the reign of the state administrator, yeah. administrator and then the court you know, gave, ju gave judgment in favor of the Abu Jalil of Ijebul. And so you've had this long line of detriment of, um, of uh, Obas. But you know, every time there's a detriment, the Oba is usually banished uh, to another domain where he's to spend the rest of his life. But now that you have constitutional democracy, yes. you know, all of those movements are, are guided by the provisions of uh, the fundamental rights uh, of uh, citizens, you know, way outside the throne and the privileges that Anoba enjo enjoys. And so to that extent, the court had consistently heard that um, once um, a governor steps out of that band, then it's, you know, it's an unconstitutional power. Yeah, because pe people argue the fact that we're, we are in a democratic setting, that sh does this still apply? Obide, you, you the, want to quickly the, the react bottom, to that? The bottom line yeah. is, I think, in the first place, in a democratic uh, setting, uh, this should it even apply in the first place uh, because I know certainly um, every citizen has a right to free movement as long as their movement and their association is not um, one that brings about this unity or discord in, in the country. So um, just as a normal citizen now, without even mind saying words, without um, wanting to sound like someone who is grounded in law, I think it's it's something barbaric and which if at all there's any provision in the constitution before now that supports that, it's something that needs to be looked into. Uh, because 
whether banished or not banished, uh, this person we're talking about, it, it might have been someone else who cites and they see they have values they can still add to the growth of the country and banishing them, uh, denying them association with that. Uh, fellow citizens. No, no, I think we should, we should get one point, one point correctly. Okay. Um, anybody can be arrested and restrained. If you remember um, the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, the, um, I think the, the Sema way of uh, Ondo now Somewhere. was um, arrested after he was um, dethroned by the Mimiko led administration. Mm. Sure. For for assaulting his wife, um, the issue here is that the state had denied that they didn't banish Sanusi, and then yes. also, um, he, like his legal team had said, when they asked for an arrest warrant, the police didn't provide any, and um, also this is no longer banishment but an arrest. So until government or this, the government of Kano State or the federal government, because now you're talking about trans-jurisdictional issues, you know, until the federal government says this is the offense that Sanusi has committed, what the federal government basically is doing is unconstitutional and is a violation of his fundamental right. Because I think for them to have taken him from Kano to Nasarawa State, State, because if there's an offense, that offense can only be prosecuted within Kano State. Okay. To down take him from Kano to Nasarawa State, presume or presupposes as a federal offense that had been committed. Until we are told that offense, then the government has consistently violated his fundamental rights. All right, now on the issue of the banishment, the, the Kano AG did say that the issue of banishment was not part of the decision of, of the Kano State government. However, um, news and videos of security operatives invading the palace were seen. Now, what were they doing there if, if we were to ask that question in the first place? <laughs> uh, we are in Nigeria and um, we've seen scenarios where security operatives would always refer to power from the top. Mm. So probably that's... Um, and, uh, well, the power from the top is always the government, as it were, probably a circle in the government, someone in the government, some machinations within the government um, or a state house. So uh, we will still have to refer to the government. And, and what does it no, say about our security but, personnel in our country? But, but I, mean, yes. the, I think um, the Kano state at Nigeria is trying to hide behind one finger um, because um, from... Um, the press statement that was released by his team of lawyers, who were with him at the time yes. of the arrest um, yesterday, they, they did say that the team was led by a commission of police in the state. And um, also it is very instructive at this point to know that the commission of police cannot effect such an arrest, arrest. if there is no instruction from either the governor arrest. or somebody in the presidency. Yes. That effect an arrest without a warrant. And yet... They have denied that the uh, banishment was not part of the, 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 the decision of the so, state government. And the commissioner had not been queried. The police people that participated were not queried. Yet there was a, a private jet waiting to ferry him to uh, uh, Abuja. And then there was an helicopter waiting to ferry him from Abuja to Nasara State. And there were vehicles stationed to carry him from where the helicopter dropped him yes. all the way to seven hours drive to eventually where to, to Logo Town. So it means that these were properly orchestrated and planned. Mm. And so it is not something that the police, as, um, as, uh, fin as um, financially handicapped as they are, it is not something that they can pull out without somebody actually backing and financing it. So all of those stories of, oh, the government is not involved at all, you, you know. Interesting. Now, now, now we're talking about this. Marines. Yes. Now, a, a former governor of Kano State, Rabi Okonkoso, has accused President Mahmoud Buhari of masterminding the detriment of the Emil Kano. Now, Mahmoud, that's Sanusi II, and that he has been interfering in the affairs of the state. How true do you think this is? Because the president has come out and said they, they didn't and are not interfering in the affairs of Kano okay. State. What do you expect them to say? To say that they to agree that they were interfering, you, you know, see, let, let's they say action speaks louder than words. The president is the commander in chief, is the head of his party. Forget the fact that you have a, a, a chairman of yes. a party. The box stop at his table is if it's his party or a domain controlled by his party is in crisis. 
the onus is on him to call his to call the governor in charge of that state to find out security report of what is happening. Sanusi had been very vociferous. Yes. He helped them, you know, practically helped them to get to power. And also they assisted him to get to the throne. And getting there, he turned against his own people, turned against his, the powers that be that was supposed to be protecting. They also were not too happy. At some point, the president was called upon to intervene in the crisis between Ganduje and the Emir. And he said that um, the law does not allow him to interfere in what happened yeah. in that domain. But for me, it's not about law. It's not about being legalistic. It's about morals. It's about being a leader. It's about these are two Muslims brothers. These are two northern elders. And these are two people who also who you are ordinarily supposed to, clo to be close to. So if there's a crisis in Kano today, it is boxed up at the president's table. So denying, mm. you know, that um, he would, the Lord would not allow him to interfere. And yet you see all the, the actions and inactions of a governor in his party that probably would create crisis if not properly managed. And then you say you are not involved. All of the trappings of the event that had happened clearly shows the voice of, um, of Esau and the hand of Jacob. <laughs> Obedi, any, any thought, any reaction? I, I think um, to, to a large extent, I would want to go um, with Barista. Uh, the bulk of this falls on the president's table. And um, whether we like it or not, pre-election, we know, uh, I mean, the, the, the popular voice against Ganduji coming back, the allegations leveled against him. And um, had um, Ganduji not had the support of the powers that be, he probably wouldn't have been the governor of the state now. So for him to be there, and um, I want to believe, I mean, for everybody that plays power, I mean, you always want to give report back to whoever you feel is your backbone. And I want to believe Whoever those backbones are, I, I think they're federal might. I don't want to say it's the president now. Uh, it could be a cabal within the presidency. It could be the president himself. But it still all falls down back to that place. Okay, now there's, there's, there's an alleged corruption probe on, on Sanusi II now of two billion, <laughs> two billion um, and Naira. Now, I'm just wondering, I mean, shouldn't they have kept him in kind of state while investigation is going on on this alleged corruption probe than taking him to Nasara State? Um, let's, we need to understand all of this history. In, in when Sanusi fell out with uh, Ganduje, um, and then just before the last election, there were allegations that the candidate of the AP, uh, uh, PDP, Abba, I've forgotten his name now, that it was a distance cousin of um, Sanusi, was a blue-blooded, um, you know, uh, uh, relatives yeah. also. Um, there was allegations that um, Sanusi was tacitly supporting him because he had criticized vociferously the Ganduje-led administration that why will you be taking loan to build a railway line, a monorail, when the children are out of school? Yes. And that also the monorail was supposed to be a PPP arrangement and not a loan from the Chinese government. Yes. So the moment all of this happened, Ganduje didn't like it. The next thing was the House of Assembly setting up a committee to investigate uh, the spendings in the Emirate. And that committee in, indicted Sanusi. And then there was a law. I mean, they amended the Kano State um, um, Entrament and um, Detriment Law. Uh, immediately, Chan Sanusi challenged that law. It was passed in May. He challenged that law in court at the uh, State High Court. And the judge heard that it not only invalidating the law, mm. also quashed the indictment of the Emir in uh, that 2.1 billion uh, no. uh, allegations. Yeah. And now, in 2019, December 2019, they did amend the law again and pass the current Kano um, um, State Council Emirates law, which empowered the governor by virtue of Part 3, Section 13, to dethrone you know, the Emir. And the moment that law was passed, there were also insinuations from uh, associates close to Ganduje that they mo once they win their election at the Supreme Court, even though they deny this, that their first point of call will be to dethrone Sanusi. And so sometimes uh, uh, this month, that allegation also raised its head at the State House of Assembly. Um, and then the allegation was that, oh, no, this is different from the initial 2.1 billion, that this is a separate one. Because some PDP members on the floor of the House did query that allegation that he had is a matter that was uh, 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 subjudice and there was no need for the House, you know, to raise it. The Speaker subsequently adjourned the matter 
uh, uh, referred the matter to a committee of the House okay. to report back in two yeah. weeks. And why that was ongoing, they felt that two weeks was not good enough. And why that was ongoing, as a day before yesterday or so, they also raised the issue, and then that was where you saw the crisis on the floor of the yes. House, where some PDP members heard also that a matter that had been referred to a committee can no longer be raised on the House until the report of the committee is tabled before the House for debate. Yeah. And then the House was adjourned for 30 minutes to enable you know, parties to settle. While that was ongoing, the next thing we heard was that the uh, council, uh, the uh, state council had issued you know, a, a letter dethroning the EMEA for insubordination, or that section 13, uh, 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 so, so that part three, section 13, paragraph A to E. And then the investigation that I think, and I know for sure that that investigation will be dead on arrival, because now the essence of that investigation was to achieve what they have achieved Achieve now. already. So I had to mm. give that background story so that, you know, for the benefit of our listeners. Okay. So they've achieved that. So they, I don't think, it's not even a matter for the police. The police is not the one investigating it. So why would the police, that can't even be an excuse for arresting him and okay. taking him to Nasara. Okay. Now, now we, 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 we heard that the deposed AMIA is in, in the local government somewhere in Nassau State. And his, his legal team has said they've not been able to communicate with him since, since Monday and a threatening legal action. Give us, give us a legal perspective to this. Yeah, that, that's why I said um, it, is, um, not, um, it, it is not banishment. This is an arrest. This is an arrest through the back door. What you have here clearly is a violation of um, a man's constitutional right as provided for in Section 35. 40 and 41. And thank God also, in a matter involving an EMEA also, who was also banished, that matter had been challenged in court, and the Court of Appeal had made a pronouncement on it that the state governor had no power, absolutely, whatsoever, to take such decision. Yes. And so, depriving him of even access to his family and his legal team, it's, you know, another big issue also. It shows truly that there are plans to, to frustrate him, to um, psychologically torment him, so at the end of the day, you know, break him down. So at the end of the day, whatever plans he had before, maybe at this point they might even be negotiating with him that he should sign undertaking like they usually do. Sign undertaking that he will not challenge, you know, whatever uh, action, you know, they have taken. Yes. But it was quite unfortunate. I, I do not, I, I, I had even expected, sorry, quickly, I had expected that he would challenge his dethronement so that it would give us an opportunity to actually, you know, understand the workings of that law vis-a-vis -vis the provisions yes. of the Constitution. Yes. He had said he won't challenge that. But I know fully well that his lawyers have said they will challenge his arrest, unlawful arrest. And if they do, I can tell you for sure that with this law, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he's entitled to damages and um, the state government would definitely yeah, now, now, pay for Obide, it. Let, let's, let's for a moment just consider that the person of Gandhi, the, the kind of state go, go, um, governor, and what we know has characterized him as a person. Now, many people have argued the fact that he has no moral compass to have meted out um, this, this situation on, on, the, on the deposed AMIA. And I need your reaction on this. And what do you yeah, think you the know, kind of state know, government <coughs> hopes you know, to achieve with all of this? You, you know, before uh, you even ask this question, yes. I was going to say, I think it's good we look at the person of Sanusi and the person of Gandhi. 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 This of this. Uh, Sanusi from time immemorial had been someone, irrespective of um, what he's getting from you, wants to say it the way he feels it is. It doesn't necessarily, I mean, we can remember during the time of Jonathan, he fell out with Jonathan because he was talking about, at first, he said there was a 48 billion, he assumed there was a 48 billion uh, dollars. But eventually, you know, when he was called to the house where he told them, like, you can take this job from me and all that. It, he said he had facts of 20 billion, but that case was really never visited before he was a. a, a, a it was. It was. It, it was it not was, visited. It was investigated. Now it was investigated by Price Water invest Cooper House. Yes. But when they investigated the report, the audit report they gave. Yes. yes. At the end of it, Short they payments, said they said it. Point something billion. They said. It was Shot one point something billion, but that they, it should also be noted that this report, uh, uh, before we could come at this report, there were certain people we ought to talk to. We were not allowed access to them. Yeah. There were certain yeah. documents we no, were, no, no, I think we're know, mixing the no, issues no, here. No, no. Well, think? Well, I, I, yes. I, so that's the person of Sanusi yes. as a tour. Now we're talking about the person of Ganduje. Ganduje, since he had been governor, we've um, there's been stories 
uh, uh, about him. So definitely, this is, I just purely see this as um, dirty politics in play. Dirty politics. Quickly, um, yeah, Oshima, Ganduja, you wanna, you wanna, yeah. if you remember, Kwankwasia, the Kwankwaso, Ganduja and Kwankwaso, yeah. Kwankwaso are like this. Yeah. Kwankwaso, as governor of uh, Kano State, had Ganduja, I think, as chief of staff. When he, was, when he lost the election to Shekarao and was made minister mm. for defense, he took Ganduje along with him as chief of staff also. So when he came back the second time, he made Ganduje his running mate mm. and he became a deputy governor. And, and so he was, Ganduje was part of that Kwankwasia movement until he became governor also and he fell out. And so for Ganduje, I, with what we saw, those videos, yes. for a governor, a sitting governor accepting bribe, and that the president, that's why I said the president probably knew more than he's telling us that he know. And that the president will say, well, he, the president even tacitly admitted that Ganduje did it, but that he does not have powers to investigate. He said, if, even if Ganduje wants to collect bribe, why will he be collecting bribe in the, in, in the face of a camera? You know, because it was obvious. For, that's why some people would tell you that it can only happen in Nigeria, where a man who is um, caught, panned down, will now be the one to impeach or dethrone, you know, somebody who has not been caught yes. with hands in the cookie jar. Okay. You know, and then it's only in Nigeria where you have professors rig elections or where you have professors rig election for thugs to occupy offices. Okay, quickly, we'll let's put on Obasanjo. Obasanjo did um, send out a letter to the deposed Emir saying it is sad, um, it is bad and good. It said bad because um, it's undeserving the way he was deposed, and then good because he paid the price. I mean, what does that what does that really mean? Uh, like um, like we said from the beginning of our discourse, by the virtue of being the emir, is um, restricted. There's um, there's there's a length limit to the length he can go. Uh, in addressing issues. Do, do, so Obasanjo is probably spoken? seeing it from that. Yeah, yeah. So now Obasanjo is looking at it from that perspective now that, okay, now that you are out of this cage that's, that's been limiting you, that ordinarily should limit you from talking, it's good for you and it's even good for the country. And I remember in that letter, he also wished him, uh, like he, he was telling him to take advantage of it and be of better service. You, you could only respond to former yeah, um, president's letter to the uh, deposed Emir. Obasanjo is a mischievous uh, pers persona. Um, he's the same person who appointed um, <laughs> special advisors and said he, you know, he's not obliged to take the advice. And I know that if Sanusi were Emir under him, he would have been glad that this happened. Uh, because Obasanjo is not somebody, he loves criticism, but he's not somebody that wants to take criticism. Mm -hmm. But good or bad, uh, like I said, and like he has said, the office was probably limiting Sanusi yes. from doing what he ought to, to do. And, uh, but for Basa, you're saying he has paid the price. He has paid the price for being who he is. And that's so we can only hope that um, you know, a good governor will come and um, rewrite the wrong, which I doubt anyway. Our oh, well, legal practitioner, Liberal Soshoma, thank you very much for your contribution on this segment. And also, Bideyi Lobinko, political analyst, thank you for your contribution. Thank you, very much. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, what is happening to Nigeria's recovered loot? Stay with us.